kind of uh, our nation kind of reminds me of Israel. Amen. And uh, we can go back and look at their history and see where uh, Israel failed God. And I believe with all my heart, we are, uh, as a nation and as a people, we're failing God. Amen. Amen. And uh, I thank God for people like uh, uh, Joshua. Now, the Bible tells us in, uh, in uh, verse 6, And when Joshua let the people go, the children of Israel went every man into his inheritance to possess the land. And the people served the Lord <coughs> all the days of Joshua and all the days of the elders that, out, that outlived Joshua. And who has seen all their great, this is what it says then, in, in all the days of the elders that outlived Joshua, who has seen all the great works of the Lord that he did for Israel. And Joshua, the son of Nun, the servant of the Lord, died being a hundred and ten years old. And they buried him in the border of, the, of his inheritance in Timnathurus in the Mount of Ephraim, on the north side of the hill of Gaius. And, and also all the generation were get, gathered unto their fathers, and there, there arose another generation after them which knew of the Lord, nor yet the works which had, uh, he had done for Israel. And the children of Israel did evil in the sight of the Lord and served Baal. And they forsook the Lord God of their fathers, which brought them out of the land of Egypt, and followed other gods of the gods of the people that were around about them, and bowed themselves unto them, and provoked the Lord to anger. And they forsook the Lord and served Baal and Ashtoreth, and the anger of the Lord was hot against Israel. And he delivered them into the hands of the spoilers that spoiled them, and he sold them into the hand of their enemies round about, so that they could no longer stand before their enemies. And whether so they went out, the hand of the Lord was against them for evil. As the Lord has said, as the Lord has sworn unto them, they were greatly distressed. I was thinking about that this morning. We could uh, look, and they say that, 45% uh, of the Lutherans either don't attend church, don't believe in going to church, and have anything to do with God. Now, why is this? Amen. Now, the Bible said that uh, in the days of Joshua and all of the elders, Israel was uh, following God because the leader was following God. Amen. And after Joshua died and the elders died, the Bible says there was another generation that grew up. Now, church, I really believe in all my heart, God always gives us uh, his word that we can go by. If we'll go by God's word, we'll always be blessed and we'll always prosper. Now, God promised the children of Israel after they were taken out of the Egypt, out of the bondage and everything, and brought them into the land of milk and honey, uh, really was, was like paradise, and he gave the children of Israel instruction. And I believe God has given us instruction as well. But I was thinking about now, church, we can't blame the church for everything. But the Bible said there was a generation grew up that knew not God. And I believe with all my heart, we have a generation today that does not know God. Amen. 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 Because the building, 45% of the young people, now all these kills and everything, most of them are done by younger people. It's not the elders, mostly, it's mostly young people. And they, they were brought up without any hope, without God, and, and with no, uh, no faith or whatever, because they don't believe in God. But God told them, well, back we, first of all, we live in a church world today that the churches are doing nothing but sugarcoating the scriptures. Amen. amen. We need God's scriptures, amen, to walk by. And we can't sugarcoat. We need to tell the church, amen, exactly what God says, whether it hurts or it doesn't hurt. 
But I'll tell you, the truth will set us free. Can I hear an amen? And we need to hear the truth. But the Bible says in these last days, and we're living these days, that the, the Bible says that they hate themselves, amen, with, with uh, tears that they want to hear nothing but the sugar-coated stuff. And, and we live in a time, amen, I wrote these down because I didn't want to uh, give them. Parents worry about themselves uh, and for their pleasures more than they do their children. That they, uh, going, to, they, going to church is the last thing on their list. And we live in a generation of woes, and, and God is a hindered to their social life. And let and understand, let the schools and the government raise our children. How many know that the schools and the, general, and the government is doing a good job? They're doing a good job for our children because this is the kind of shape that they're in. Now, church, what I'm trying to say is you can't blame the most all the church on this situation here because God give Israel instructions and I believe we have to go also by these instructions. Amen. Can I hear an amen? amen? And church, we shouldn't worry. We, we need to worry about our children and, and love our children and, and not forsake our children. Can I hear an amen? amen. Now the Bible tells us, and I want to read this, I ask the question why, amen. Number, number one, the Bible says in Romans 15 verse 2, and it says, what for it, whatsoever things were written before time were written for our learning. Now, like I said a while ago, God tell, told Israel exactly how to raise up their children and, and how to and then, uh, uh, let them know about the Lord. We live in a generation now that the, 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 the parents, amen, they're not raising their children. They're not telling them, amen, the most important thing is about the God. Can I hear an amen now, church? What are you trying to say? It said that the scriptures is for our learning and also for our patience and also a, a, a comfort and the scriptures also gives us hope. Young people today do not have any hope because we haven't given them any hope. Can I hear an amen? Now, the Bible says in the book of Joel, Joel chapter uh, 1 and 2, verse 2 and 3, I want you to turn there because church, you need to underline this. We have an obligation to this generation, and we have an obligation, amen, to the young people. Job, Job chapter 1, verse 2 and 3. Now, God gives them instruction. God has given us instruction, amen. Now, I know where most of us are grandparents, but I'll tell you, I was thinking about that little boy that there in the center of the pews while ago, and what they were saying to me, I saw him. Boy, he was just a bob in his head, and he was going around all with it, amen. And that that's the way we brought our children up. We brought them up in the, in the sanctuary where they could hear and see and understand what the, what they believe, what the parents believed in. But the Bible says in the book of Joel, chapter 1, Hear this, ye old men, and give you all your attendance of the land. Have this been in your days, and, or when, even in the days of your fathers, tell your children of him. And let your children tell their children and their children to another generation. So church, the generation after generation after generation, we see a decline. And church, I, I don't believe it can decline even not even much more than what it is right now. What are you trying to say? We Israel was supposed, supposed to tell uh, their children, amen, about God, how great God is, how great God was, and what God has done for their lives. I tell you, church, I believe with all my heart, uh, the parents need to be telling their children what God has done for them. Now, the, the, as I said last week, week before last, there's 69 or 75 percent of the people today in our land, amen, say that they are Christians. I hear an amen. amen. Now, if, if they say they are Christians, amen, then they should be telling, amen, their children about God, what God has done for them. I, I taught my children what God has done for me. And I tell you, church, they, they watch and they, and they look and see and see and, 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 and you, need to, you need to tell them. I told one parent that uh, the pub was saying that, uh, that uh, I'm not going to tell my children or make them go to church, let them figure it out on their own. They, young people cannot figure this out on their own. It's up to the parents to show them and tell them, amen, amen how important church is, amen. how important God is. 
God is important in my life. Can I hear an amen? amen. And we need, to, we need to tell them that. Just what the Bible says. Tell your children of it, and let your children tell their children. So we, we've got a generation, they, they've been as grown up right now, and they don't know nothing about Jesus because we didn't tell them nothing about Jesus. Most of the most of the Christians, I hear an amen. amen. Why? Because they're wrapped up in the cures of this life. They're wrapped up, amen, in what, what the, uh, the God can do for their lives and, and what, what all their children and everything, instead of let them know how important God is. You know, church, when, I, when I've been since the background had our kids raising them up, you know what my prayer was? I mean, I had, Angie was a, a, a A student. I mean, she was a, a volunteer. And a, you know what? I was proud of her. But you know what my heart's desire was? Lord, let them be saved and let me be an example. Amen. Because if they, they could be as smart as a, as a what, wizard or whatever they want to be and, and grow up and be lost, I haven't accomplished nothing. Are you listening to what I'm saying, church? That should be the first thing on our parents' mind. It's not how, what they're growing up to be or what they're going to be, how great they are in, in this society. Are they saved and born again and on their way to heaven? Can I hear that? Amen. I want my children saved. You should want your children and grandchildren say that they're on their way to heaven. That should be the most important thing that you can uh, that tell your children that they need to be saved. And, and church, I believe with all my heart, we as a church is losing but as are Christians at home, 69 to 75% of people confess themselves to, for Christians. Amen. But we, we lost, we're losing this generation. Why are we losing this generation, church? Amen. Now, look what it says. Deuteronomy chapter 11, verse 16. Deuteronomy chapter 16, verse 11. Deuteronomy 11, verse 16. He said, take heed that he was telling the children of Israel. He brought them into the land of milk and honey. He brought them into the land that God, I mean, they didn't have to build houses. God could totally bless them. And this is what it says. Deuteronomy chapter 11, verse 16. Take heed to yourselves that your heart be not deceived and turn aside and serve other gods and worship them. Now, church, uh, a God, what is a God? Something that you serve. I serve a living God. I serve a God that's not dead. I serve a God amen, that gives me life and, and gives me hope and gives me patience and blesses me. He's a living God. But church, we can have other gods also, which are idols. It's amazing today. They say we have Christian people, they say that amen that they're saved, but on Sunday mornings that they're out there worshiping the lake or worshiping their boat or worshiping their camper or worship other things and still and, and, and not let their children know the most important thing on Sunday morning is to come to church and worship God because He saved us and delivered us and we're on our way to heaven. Can I hear an amen? We got the Bible said that we've got to love and serve with all our heart, with all our mind, with all our soul. Now I believe He'll bless us. But church Israel failed and because Israel failed Amen. They're, they're, they were uh, they were taken into captivity, and we were talking to a Sunday school lesson today. How heaven destroyed all those thousands, thousands of Jews because they caused a curse on themselves. We are causing a curse upon our young generation because we're not serving God and because we're not telling them about God and showing them about God. Tell you me, man. Now, I'm not, I'm not scoring the church. I'm just telling everybody the, out there in the in Cuba and everything. We, we, we're missing the boat. We have missed the boat. From generations to generations, amen, the kids are growing up and, and, they're, and they're losing. They, they don't have nothing to do with God. I want to get this generation to know about God and to serve God and have God on their hearts and their minds. Can I hear that? Amen. Amen. That's what it says in verse 17. And it says, well, verse 16, and serve other gods and worship them. And then the Lord's wrath will be kindled against you, and uh, he shall shut up heaven, and there be no rain that the land yield, nor her fruit, least any person he perish quickly from of all the good, uh, good land which the Lord giveth you. Therefore shall you lay up these words by words in your heart. Now this is what it said. Therefore shall you lay up these words in, uh, by words into your heart, into your soul, and by them for a sign, amen, upon your hand, that they may be promised 
between your eyes, and you shall listen what it says them, and you shall teach them your children. And when thou settest in thy house, and when thou walkest by the way, when thou liest down, and when thou risest up, and thou shalt write them upon the doorpost of thy house, and upon thy days, that your days may be multiplied, that multiply the days of your children in the land which thou swore unto them, your fathers to give them, in the days, in the, as the days of heaven upon their fruition. For you shall just keep all these commandments which I command you, and do them. To love the Lord your God, now this is what it says here, to walk in all his ways and cling to him. In other words, church, we need to tell our children, that should be the first thing that the, the children hear, is that how good God is, what God has done, what God is going to do, we should tell them, amen, one day we're going to get saved, and you can get saved and go to heaven, or one day you're going to be lost and go to the devil's hell. But God will bless his people, church, and, and church, we need to tell the children, we need to tell the young people, we need to tell this generation, and church, we are letting the schools and the government raise your children to your grandchildren. Oh, you just want to say and meet your children in church and, and, and show them, amen, about God and talk to them about God and walk the way that you're supposed to walk. If you walk, that it pleasing to yourself. You're not showing your children, grandchildren, nothing. If the favor in your life is other gods except God, you're not sure that that generation, amen, what is the most important thing in your life, and that is God. Can I hear amen? Amen. What it says. No, and he says to walk in all his ways and to cling unto him, and then will the Lord drive out these nations from before you, and you shall possess great nations and mighty than yourself. So God is telling the children of Israel, He said, I will bless you. I will bless the nation of Israel. I will bless your children. I will bless your home. I will bless your land. And church, we see we're living in the land today. Our, our homes are not blessed. I mean, church, look at the, uh, the society. Look how evil it is. Look how what they're doing. I mean, and the young people have no hope. They, and, and they don't have no uh, 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 no word to look to and everything else. They're hopeless and they're helpless. And nobody to tell them where to turn to. I thank God, church, I want to turn to Jesus. Amen. And church, Jesus Amen. is an answer to the society. He's an answer to this generation. And church, yeah. we should be praying, praying to God that God will be able to end this generation. If he doesn't get in this generation, we are going to lose this generation. And trust me, today, it may be too, so well, it's too late for me, my children are growing, growing up. No, it says that my people, when you're called by my name, you'll hold them and pray and seek my face. Trust me, that they must seek God's face and, and tell, turn this generation around, turn the parents around, and turn, and turn, the, turn the leaders around, that we can have our way of blessed again, and we can be, we can be, well, the Bible says we can be the head, not the tail. I thank God, church, the one time yeah. we were the head and not the tail. Amen. Amen. Boy, <clears throat> oh, I feel this. Yeah. Be God made this on my heart, church. We're living in a generation. Yeah. Amen. That we're losing this generation. And church, I believe we're going to pray to God that's God to turn this generation around and turn their parents around and let them see what, what the world is doing, church. I mean, I, I, there's been two generations since, I mean, I've got, I've, I have, third I have three generations, right? Yeah. Angie and David. David and my great grandchildren. So four generations. Four of four generations. Every generation getting worse and worse right. and worse. Yeah. What are you trying to say, Brother Mike? I'm saying, church, every time that we don't get our children to the church and pray for them and seek God for the for face for them, I'm here to tell you, I mean God's gonna come back. But the Bible said that God was angry. With them. I mean, God is angry with our nation. He's angry with our churches. He yeah. because we left our, this generation and the, and the young people, amen, we left them hopeless. The church, they're hopeless right now. Amen. amen. But we can pray for them. Amen. I said we can pray for them. Amen. I mean, it's time for the church, God's people, to fall down. If they say they're Christians and, 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 they, and they don't have a burden and a hunger for 
of our children and for their grandchildren and for all souls out there. There's something wrong with our heart and there's something wrong with our spirit and our eyes, amen, needs to be known with eyesight that we may be able to see the condition and the shape our world is in yeah. and that we can fall down upon our knees and like the book of Joel says, we can go to an altar, praise God, and weep before the altars of, amen, of God. Let those tears flow upon the altar and yeah. say, God, save this generation. Yeah. Save yeah. this generation. They need a heart transplant. Yeah. They need a hope. They need, they need life. They need a promise, glory to God. And we can give that to them as a church by praying and seeking God in fasting. I mean, God told the children of Israel plainly. I mean, it's, it's as plain as you can see. And I know a lot of people don't read the Old Testament. He pays you to read the Old Testament. Because the Bible said the scriptures were written for our example and for our learning and for our patience and, and, and for our comfort and for our hope. And church, we can give that to the this generation if we just show them that, that God is in answer and God saved me and delivered me and brought, brought me from drugs to alcohol, whatever you may be delivered from. God delivered that and He can deliver you. And he wants you to go to heaven. God wants you this generation to be saved. Amen. 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 But we're asleep. We're not praying. We're not seeking God. We don't see the, we, we don't see this happening, church. So we're on we're in our own selfish way. Yeah. Lord, as long as I'm happy. It, 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 everybody's the same, church. Dear people up in the front house, they've been in there so long. I'm talking about both parties. Amen. That they forgot where they come from. Amen. They, when, when the last time they went to the grocery store? When the last time they went and filled up their car? Can I hear an amen? When the last time? I mean, they're not worried about being short because they know they need all that stuff with their hands and everything. But church, I believe it's time, amen, that we begin to seek God, say, God, put God these spiritual leaders up there. And I really believe in my heart. Like they said, well, the president shouldn't happen before the two terms. Well, we got some people up there that's been there for 30, 40 years. They need to get out yeah. there and get some fresh up there that knows how to live. Let them yeah. pay the same in church. Let them go to the same grocery store. And then let them amen, uh, have the same in church we have. Now, I guarantee you one thing, they will change their way. Yeah. Yeah. Our generation is now in church, and they're trying to raise our children. Amen. We need to pray for our nation and our leaders, church. Yeah. Well, we all of a sudden are blaming both, both parties. No. It starts at home. Right. So what God said right here, it starts at home. Yeah. You bring them up in the way of the Lord. When, you, when you're going somewhere, talk about the Lord. Yes. Amen. When you're in your home, talk about the Lord. Tell them how good He is. What God, see, God, God lets us be a witness to our children when they're having problems. When they come home hurt and disappointed and everything. You say, you know what? I was in the same condition, but you know what? God helped me, deliver me, and give me hope. We got we we got many ways, amen, to, to witness to our children and grandchildren because God gave us opportunity after opportunity and opportunity, and we fail because we're on a little selfish way. Amen. As long as I'm happy. Amen. As long as I, they don't bother me. Amen. 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 Do I think God for one thing, church? I'm saved on my way to heaven. How about you? And I want my children to be saved, my grandchildren to be saved, I want my loved ones to be saved, I want my friends to be saved, I want all the people in the church to be saved. I want this whole church, I mean, the whole church world to be saved. But church, I'm here to tell you, I mean, God is angry with this generation and with his people. Amen. Amen. Now, I think this is a good message, church, that people need to hear this. You don't know, hear these kind of messages before. Oh, my God, is good. And if you're here this morning, and you just blame me, I'll pray for you. And you just place $50 in that offer plate, I guarantee he'll bless you. No, if you just turn to if you just raise your hands up, God will save you. God will be, and no, I'm going to tell you, some of you this morning, Amen. They're going through storms and, and, and they're desperate and, and uh, they, they just uh, they need help. And, and God is the answer. Yes, God is the answer. But you need to tell them also 
Jesus probably didn't that say God is trying to get you saved where he can deliver you and bless you. Because the Bible says God will bless the righteous. He'll not withhold anything that walks up right with him. First time we got to tell them if they got a problem, God is the answer. Right. Amen. Amen. Sugarcoating things. Not telling the truth about what God wants for us. Amen. Yeah. I know I bet a little bit, but I love it. It doesn't matter now the church, you've got to come and bless them, you've got to make them happy. Right. Man, as long as they're happy, as long as they're dancing, as long as they're shouting everything, boy, we'd be in the church. The first time a preacher or a pastor preaches on something, they don't want to hear a don't like, they slowed up. Yeah. Can't wait to get out of here. <laughs> you think that tonight, you thought this morning, shame on you. Did I hear they Amen. 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 Well, church, we need to tell people. We need to tell people God wants us to first of all be saved and delivered. If you're here this morning, don't know Jesus, yes. man or woman, you're the greatest example. So if you're the greatest example for your children and your grandchildren, you can tell them about Jesus, what God has done for them. And that this don't talk it. There's so many people claim to be Christians that they talk it, talk it, talk it, but they never walk it. Amen. 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 When you talk it, walk it. Amen. 69 to 75 percent of so called Christians in our nation, in our generation, is, is going down. We're having revival. Some of the churches have got these, all these thousands. We're having revival. And, and the church is in bad shape. We're living in a Mayos church, age church. Amen. Luke Warren, I'm concerned about it. I'm just concerned about anything. Rich, poor, blind, and naked. And he loves only your God to move through eyes. Amen. 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 The church will stand this morning. And the Lord may do something in my heart.